Are you tired of mucking around in low-tier missions? scavenging 200-year-old husks for spare parts, and dreaming of the day your mercenary company will be revered throughout the galaxy? Grab your neuro helmet and a shopping cart, because I'm going to detail 7 items you should be looking to get your greedy mitts on to make this a reality. First up is the Prototype Sync Kit. This is the absolute gold standard for sync kits, and it's such a unicorn that I put it first on this list. Don't pass this shit up. I don't care what else is on your loot list, if you have one pick and this pops up, it's your choice. 30% reduction in weapon heat for equipping, and additional sinks only take up a single critical slot on top of giving you extra weapon heat reduction. Do you want to build a bear a custom Hellstar for your company? This is how you do it. Beg, borrow, steal, kill, sell your firstborn, push a friend out an airlock, whatever. When I first came into Rogue Tech, I had one of these drop in my third or fourth mission, and I brushed it off. Prototype? Like old school 2800s industrial mech type tech? Give me that medium laser. I'll carry that scar the rest of my life. Ugh, it still hurts. If you can spare some picks, I try to grab a couple of the individual sinks while you wait for a drop. Low priority though, because you have no idea when you'll actually see the kit. You'd like to see stuff go boom, right? I mean, if you wanted to play patty cake, rogue tech is not where you should be. So you'll need your guns to be shearing limbs off your enemies and frying their bacon. And to do that, they need to hit. Enter the turret mount. For a single ton, all the weapons mounted in a torso location get an additional 2 accuracy. How good is that? Well, the only way to otherwise get plus 2 accuracy in a single piece of kit are the various fire control systems, and you only get one of those per mech. The Hunchback also has a piloting unlock after 20 chassis missions that duplicates this effect for the right torso. This effect is rare, fellows, and you aren't limited to one per mech. You're most likely to salvage these from Vulture Mark II variants, so keep a sharp eye on the battlefield. They are carried in the center torso of that mech, which uses a standard Intersphere XL engine as well. Shoot these things from a flank to increase your chances of a big score. One ton. Two accuracy. I really don't think I need to say anything else. This next piece of kit isn't anywhere near as flashy. In fact, you are unlikely to notice the benefit of an active probe while on mission at all, but that doesn't mean it is not there. I'm generally against the equipment that provides increase to sensor or sight range when we talk about the head slot item, but that's because it's a limited commodity on a mech. The active probe, on the other hand, does not take a unique slot. Truth be told, however, what I really like about this kit is the passive counter to opposing ECM and stealth. Mo accuracy, mo beta. Because of this, my preferred variant of the options for active probes is the Clan Light active probe because it's only a half ton and has slightly better secondaries than the Inner Sphere version. However, I recognize that my choice here is related to my personal playstyle, where I prefer to be relatively close to my enemies and running offensive jams. For those who are fighting at longer ranges or without a jamming skirmish unit, I'd pick the boosted BAP for an increase in ECM counter to 3, while weighing only a ton and a half. The Bloodhound probe accomplishes the same without the visibility penalty, but weighs an extra half ton. I'd rather have the weight. But in general, you will desperately want some kit to cut through enemy ECM effects as you move up in difficulty, and the probes represent a solid way to do just that. At the very least, you might consider running a unit with support gear like NARC, TAG, or multiple PPCs, and equip it with a strong probe to cut through defense and make it easier for the rest of your company to hit. Plus, it would let you yell, GET PROBE, BIATCH, as you pull the trigger. There are quite a few options for upgrades to your mech's gyro but the one with the most irreplaceable effect has got to be the Dreadnought version. It starts with a small reduction to incoming damage of 5%, saves 3% of your chassis weight, and ensures that you get a free brace after a walk movement. And then, if you are choosing to take cover, you'll gain Bulwark on the unit for an extra bonus. That's 25% damage reduction in the open, and 45% damage reduction in cover. Aside from simply not being shot, this is the single biggest upgrade to your survivability you can put on a mech. The only thing about this mod is it requires you to refrain from sprinting in order to get the free brace, but, and this is huge, if you sprint and end your movement in cover, you'll gain Bulwark anyway. There's usually enough cover around that you'll have options to keep your defensive bonus, especially if you put this gyro on a mech with some decent mobility. It's difficult to overstate just how good this mod is, and unfortunately, as with the Proto Sync kit, it can be difficult to find these in the field as well. I favor the Dreadnought over the other defensive gyros, because even with a reduction in hit chance, you will take damage if enough guns fire at your unit. 
I'd much rather be slightly easier to hit in comparison and take a fraction of the damage. Continuing our theme with defensive equipment, the next item on my list is the AMS Mark II. I'm exceptionally partial to this variant of anti-missile system for a couple of reasons. Most of the other available systems will only protect the carrying unit, which makes it more difficult to both field to adequate coverage and provide reliable enough protection to successfully defend against a volley of more than a few missiles. This latter point is especially relevant as you move up in difficulty tiers, as larger launchers become more ubiquitous. Granted, this feature of the Mark II requires that you overload the system upon drop. That's a small price to pay for the defensive power the system adds to your company. Even just a couple of these scattered amongst your forces is a huge reduction in the amount of missile damage that will hit home. To say nothing of the Iron Dome put up if you manage to equip each unit with one. As the Mark II only deals one damage per hit, you will need anywhere from two to four hits to destroy a single missile, so the more AMS you field, the vastly more protective you will become. I found one ton of ammo per system to cover my needs for most missions. My thought process being that by the time you've expended 200 shots, the amount of missile damage coming your way should be reduced enough to manage with normal defensives. This is absolutely predicated on killing your opponents quickly though, so you might feel safer to bring an extra half or full ton. Of course, if you simply prioritize destruction of missile carrying units, that extra ammo would be much less necessary. Given that I just talked about how awesome the Mark II AMS is, you might be surprised to see me recommend a missile system. While you will definitely face enemies with AMS, they are rarely deployed thick enough to shut you out completely, usually appearing on just a couple of units, if at all. As missile weapons offer some of the highest raw damage per ton, I think you should just accept that sometimes not all of your missiles will land, though using streak launchers will help mitigate that. In particular, I'm a big fan of the larger count tube systems, such as the Streak SRM-6 and Streak MRM-40. These systems are fantastic for finding and exploiting the holes in enemy armor that your large caliber weapons have created, and can obliterate units if used from a flank where their damage can become more concentrated. The trade-off for using Streak launchers versus more standard variants is the extra weight paid for the Streak system, and the loss of specialized ammo like Acid or Inferno. Your likely first reaction when you see the weight penalty for a Streak 40 will be to put it in the bin, but once you see it in action, I'm pretty confident you'll change your mind. Consider that 40 tubes of standard LRMs will see only a portion of those munitions hit per round. As a result, not only will you need to carry more ammo to compensate for these missed shots, but it means the expected performance is a Gaussian curve. Decently consistent, but not overwhelming. The Streak Launcher will only expend ammo when it hits, and when it does, you will get a massive damage spike that can cripple or outright kill. The chance of kill rises dramatically when facing Intersphere XL Engine mechs, especially, and woe to your enemies if you manage to procure some clan streak launchers. The bigger, meaner brothers to the OG lasers, the x pulse laser family is one of my personal favorites for filling out the pod space on a mech. Still retaining the additional accuracy and evasion negation of traditional pulse lasers, these babies nearly double the maximum damage and land that damage in just a single hit, 45 damage on the medium, and a whopping 80 for the large, all with a reasonable amount of heat buildup. As if that wasn't enough, the range bands for these lasers are increased a bit as well. The only disadvantage to the x family is that they have damage falloff outside medium range, so to get the full power out of these weapons, you'll want to be in pretty close. For this reason, I usually eschew the small x and stick to the medium and large. The large in particular is one of the best damage per heat weapons in the game, and because of its comfortably sized range brackets, you won't generally be losing much damage even if you stand in the back pew pewing over your company's heads. Even better, the medium version of this system can start dropping pretty early in your career, to the point where I have taken to mostly ignoring the traditional pulse lasers and just waiting to grab X pulses. If you've been holding off on tackling those 4 and 5 skull missions, picking up some of the kit detailed in this video should help push you through to glory. And riches. Always riches. Smooth drops and good hunting, commanders.